what is the difference between an audio unit and an inter-app audio instrument in GarageBand iOS? It confuses a lot of people, yeah, because there's two different ways to use external instruments. Now, let's take a step back, shall we? Because many of you may not know that you can use external instruments. You've got all of the instruments here in GarageBand, and you probably know that if you hit the plus button here, you can scroll through. You've got keyboards, you've got drums, you've got amps, you've got microphones, you've got strings and bass and guitars, and world instruments, you've got a whole bunch of stuff. But have you ever stopped and looked at this one, the external, and noted that there's two different ways to add external instruments? Well, what you can do is you can download an instrument onto your iPhone or iPad, and then you can point GarageBand to it, and it will use that external instrument. Yeah, it's as cool as it sounds. Let's show you. Now, the old way of doing this was called inter-app audio. What this did is it connected GarageBand. It loads up another app and it connects GarageBand to that. So you play in the other app and it records into GarageBand. Let's show you how that works and then we'll show you audio unit extensions, what the difference is and why you may prefer one over the other. So if we tap on inter-app audio, here we go. We're presented with all of the different applications that I use here that support inter-app audio. Now, there's a heap of them on here, but I'm going to use Ravenscroft because this is my favorite piano. I love the Ravenscroft 275 piano. Thomas Galane put me onto it probably a year ago now, and I haven't stopped using it. So if we tap on the Ravenscroft, what happens is it loads up this piano and we can play it. Let's just turn us up a bit. So we can play the piano. But what you'll notice is up in the top corner here, we've got little controls. We've got our play, our record, and our back button. We can also tap this GarageBand button and jump straight back to GarageBand. Here's how we're set up. We've got our clean audio track here, and we've got the Ravenscroft here. If we tap on that one, we go back to the app. So it is connecting these two apps. It's running Ravenscroft in the background while you're running GarageBand, and it's sending the audio signal from Ravenscroft into GarageBand. So here is our GarageBand. What we'll do is we'll just make sure we solo this because I'm using this on a, on a track that's already got music. So we'll just solo this and uh, we'll turn our metronome on. And then what we can do is again, if we go back to that audio track, we tap on the Ravenscroft, we're loaded in here. Yeah, now if this is working as it should, I can hit this record button and record in some sound. Let's try it. There you go. My amazing little composition there. We hit the record button again, hit the play button, we turn it off. So we're not recording anymore. We can now jump back over to GarageBand and look what's happened up the top here. If we go back to our track view, we've recorded in and it's recorded that audio that we've played through Ravenscroft. There it is. I mean, the volume was down a little bit too low, but you can see that it's working here. We'll just turn that metronome off. Let's take a listen. There you go. So it's recorded in. Now, the first thing you'll notice here is that it's recorded audio. So if I want to edit this, I can't. I can't go in and edit like I would a MIDI track. So the difference between this and, say, the piano that we'd use here in GarageBand is that we can't edit it. We can't edit the notes. We can't edit the sustain. We can't quantize it. We can't do any of those cool things that we can do. But wait, there's a way. And we'll show you that in a minute, super cool. But we can use it just like an audio track. So we can come into our settings, we can adjust the gain and the speed and the looping and, and other options that we have there. And we can, of course, delete this, re-record it, move it around, trim it, split it, cut it, do all the rest. So it's a good way to go. And there's so many inter-app audio instruments that you can use. It makes it a super flexible way to do things. However, there is a different, some would say better way to approach this. And that's what we're gonna show here now. Let's hit the plus button again. We'll go to our external instruments and we'll hit audio unit extensions. Now here we've got a much smaller subset of instruments. And the reason being that this is a newer way of doing things. And it's a little bit more complex from the development side, which means that a lot of app developers haven't actually transitioned from inter-app audio over to audio unit V3. But it does have some advantages over inter-app audio. So let's once again grab the Ravenscroft. And this time, it looks a little different, yeah. Instead of opening up this app separately, it actually opens it up within GarageBand. So we're right here in GarageBand. There's no connection out. There it is, Ravenscroft there, and it's actually here within GarageBand. So again, we can do exactly what we did before. We can come in here and load the instrument, tap on that one there, and we're ready to go here. All right, let's try something, shall we? We'll hit record again. Again. 
I didn't have my metronome on. But that's okay. You get the gist. Now let's come back out here and look at this. Yes, there you go. We've got our MIDI track now. So we've got MIDI notes in here on an external instrument. So this is why this is super cool, because now what we can do is tap on this one and go to edit, and we can actually edit the notes. So if I wasn't super happy with that, I'm like, oh, because I didn't have the metronome on, my timing there was off. Let's just bring that back, bring that back there, and then we can just play it back and we can... <laughs> Still doesn't sound good, does it? We can change the note. <laughs> and again, if you're using a MIDI controller or you're putting things in, that can work a lot better. The cool thing is then that you can move this around. You can do exactly what you do with any other sort of MIDI information. We can go and just throw it on this other piano if we want to. You can get other piano sounds. So say we've got this. Here's a good way to do it. This classical ground we've already got on here. If we move this down to our Ravenscroft, guess what? We can now play that piano part that we've already written and we can play it here on the Ravenscroft. Cool, yeah. So you can you can add in instruments and just manipulate the sound just like you would any other MIDI instrument. It's very, very cool. Now, there are some advantages to, uh, to interrupt audio as well. So you would have noticed that when we looked uh, at the interrupt audio, we'll just go back to this one, that when we, when we selected our instrument, well, we're going to have to add a new one, aren't we? Hang on. Hold the phone, Mavis. We'll come in here. Uh, when we selected a new one, that you'll notice that things like AUM and Audio Bus have a whole bunch of really cool options here that you can play around with. See all these little aux sends that we have that are coming out of Aurea, that are coming out of uh, Audio Bus. There's a lot of different multi-channel options. Thumb Jam as well. They have a lot of different slots and a lot of different ways to connect your apps with GarageBand. So there's definitely advantages of audio of interap audio over audio unit plugins. The problem is it is going to be deprecated. Now, Apple haven't said exactly when, but it, when GarageBand 2.3.8 was released and iOS 13 was released, they did say that uh, eventually InterApp Audio is going away and everything will be audio unit extensions. So if you're buying new apps or if you're investing in apps, keep that in mind that eventually InterApp Audio will likely not be a thing. Now, we don't know when that will be, and hopefully most of your app developers have implemented some sort of AUV3 way of doing things before then. But there you go. If you've ever been wondering, what are these external instruments? How does Interrap Audio work? How does Audio Unit Instruments work? And what the heck is the difference? Now you know.